KC's Audio Vault. Brian Head Welch, June 10th, 2011. Hey, this is Brian Welch calling for an interview. Hey, Brian, how are you doing today? Good, how's it going, man? Uh, not bad. So you're at the Niverville County Fair this weekend. Are you doing two different performances? I'm doing one tonight and then uh, then speaking Sunday morning church service. What, what kind of stuff do you get into at, at a speaking engagement? I usually just tell the, the shock story of my past <laughs> and then uh, just to be myself, you know what I mean? So you, uh, you get their attention and then kind of tell your your story. I know maybe not everybody listening might know your story, but you're the, the founding guitarist in Corn in 2005. You walked away. Was there... Was there something growing inside of you throughout that time, or was it like a, a switch, a light going on that made you step back? It was brewing, man, throughout the years because I was watching like videos of my of uh, stuff I did with Corn, like uh, interviews and stuff, just the other day, and I was like, I would take like a swig of beer like every thirty seconds. Just I was just I would drink, 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 drink for years, and I was just never comfortable being me. You know what I mean? And you laugh and you do all that stuff while you're drinking, but like in reality, I was I didn't like myself, you know. And so that that the richer I got, the more famous I got. Like it wouldn't take away the fact that I I was growing to like really hate myself, you know. And so so when I just uh, when I changed my life and everything, it's just that was like the switch going off, just going you know no more, you know. And I'm gonna figure out this you know the, what it means to exist, you know, and just like be happy. So it it had to be one or the other at that point. It was either corn or God. Um, it was it was more than that. You know, what I mean, I had a six year old daughter at the time. You know, and she's like at home alone. You know, with nannies and everything. Her mom split. She got hooked on drugs, and so it was like, it was like I was thinking about it before God and all that. Thinking, man, I need to be there for my daughter, but I just couldn't do it because I was so wrapped up in my rock star life. You know, but when I when I did, like, give my life to God, I felt like I got the strength to, like, you know what? I don't got to live for me all the time no more. I could live for my daughter. I could raise her. I could do this. You know, so it was a lot more than just, uh, look, I got to leave corn for God, you know? It was just, it was it was my, my family, you know? She, she was about five or, you said six when, when you split, so she's uh, she's getting close to being a teenager now, isn't she? Oh, my gosh. She's almost, yeah, she's 13 in a couple of weeks, and she's like, listening to this little Justin Bieber kid and, like, driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm like, no, listen to metal. Listen to metal. She's like, no, pop music. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get some, some funny looks going into churches to speak? Because, you know, metal occasionally has a, a bad is a bad word in, in churches. Uh, I think that was more in the old days, you know, but uh, I usually go to places that are just the contemporary, you know, they're cool, but, you know, mostly I just you know, go out and tour and play the music stuff. So it's not much different than it was back in Corn. It's just, you know, it's smaller, and it's, uh, but it's still wild and loud and crazy and pits and everything like that. So, Have you covered up any of your tattoos? Was there, were there any from your younger days that maybe don't kind of fit in with your, your current outlook? No, man, I'm not, I'm not all uh, overly religious like that. I got a... I got a few scripture tattoos, but I got, like, after I quit corn, I actually got a corn tattoo on my forearm. and So I got all kinds of stuff. I got portraits of my daughter and stuff like that. And I think all the other past tattoos were kind of, like, leading up to my new life, you know. So it's just, I mean, I didn't have any, like, naked chicks or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, are you up to three books you've published now? Yeah, but w- the second one was the same as the first one. It's just, like, a lighter version, and then... So the, basically, there's two, but um, yeah, three of them. Three, three came out, but yeah. Do you find it therapeutic to to write down your problems and kind of pass along some advice to other people? Yeah, dude, it's so cool because it's like you're spilling your soul out. You know, it's like you're emptying yourself out. So you're you're like confessing and you're and you're sharing about how you got past it. And so it's like it's cool to to hear so many people that you know saying that. You know, my my story helped change their lives and stuff, and that's like, you know, you can't. You, that's better than money to me because it's like you're, that's people's lives you're talking about. You know, who, who knows how many people like would have may have died, you know, or something. So that feels good. Are you still battling your your former record label? Oh yeah, kind of. It's a 
it's just kind of weird, you know, how it went down, just a lot of the money issues and stuff like that. And uh, it started off good, but it's just like uh, the I was getting charged for all this stuff, you know, and I was getting treated more like a an artist rather than an owner and an artist. So uh, it just got a little weird, but that's almost going to be wrapped up pretty soon here. Is that what's kind of slowing down the the new record? Is is that is that nearly done, or is it done and just sitting on a shelf? No, it's it's we're we're still working on. It. I actually had a whole record written like a year ago, and I scrapped all the songs, and now we got new songs. So it's a it's definitely a step up. I think it was just the the journey I had to go on to get to where because the first record took forever too. You know, now I'm I'm just like instead of freaking out, I'm just going all right. Well, it'll come out when it's going to come out, and. I'm not even worried about it. So hopefully this year we're going to have something out. The gigs at the uh, the Niverville County Fair this week, and this part of a, a, a huge tour you're doing across North America? No, actually, it's just like one show right now. We're just, I'm just doing like weekends right now. I do like, but this is, a, this is the only one here in Canada. Okay, so you got your head back down to the States for the, the next weekend and the next weekend? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, mellow right now. Well, thank you for phoning the show. You're at the Niverville County Fair this weekend. A performance tonight. What uh, what time you think you're hitting the stage? We hit about like ten thirty, and uh, just everyone come out. You know, let's get this pit going. <laughs> <laughs> and then the speaking engagement on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for calling the show. Yeah, thank you. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.